So I recently went on holiday to Thailand. And by far, my favorite part was the food. I mean, just see for yourself. So I'm at a food market in Thailand. It's dinner time and I don't know what to get. There's too much choice. But at the end of every meal, no matter how full I was or how much I'd eat, I'd always have one question. Why do I still have room for dessert? So I thought I'd try and find out. It's officially been devoured. Before we answer this question, we need to understand why we get hungry in the first place. Hunger is controlled by something that's already inside our body. Hormones. Hormones are the body's messengers. and When they're released, they travel all around the body and trigger specific actions. The human body is known to produce over 50 hormones. And one of these hormones is called ghrelin, also known as the hungry hormone. When we haven't eaten in a while, a special type of receptor in the stomach detects that our stomach is empty. This causes ghrelin to be released and travel to the brain specifically this area known as the hypothalamus. Ghrelin basically tells the brain that our stomach is empty so we should feel hungry. Honestly, don't think too much into it. It's an odd feeling knowing that our emotions are basically just a bunch of chemicals in our brain. Similarly, most of the time when we're full up, it's because when we eat, those special receptors that I mentioned earlier detect when our stomach stretches. This stops the release of hungry hormone ghrelin and instead causes the release of a bunch of hormones that signal to the brain that we're full up. This whole process is known as homeostatic regulation. It's just a fancy way of saying that the reason we get hungry is to make sure that the energy we burn in a day balances the amount of food we eat. It's why the more energy we burn in a day, the hungrier we get. It's a survival mechanism to prevent malnutrition. But crucially, we don't just eat food to survive. We eat food because we enjoy it. This is known as reward-based eating and is controlled by the feel-good hormone dopamine. When we eat highly palatable food, our brain releases dopamine, which tells us that we're enjoying the food and to carry on eating more of it. It's why when we get hungry, we don't just settle for a plate of grass. It's an adaptive advantage to help motivate us to seek out the high energy and nutrient dense food. So understanding reward based eating is important context to help us get to the bottom of why we always have room for dessert. Scientists actually have a specific term for this phenomenon. It's called sensory specific satiety and was first coined in 1988 by nutritional scientist Barbara Rolls. In a study, she asked 32 individuals to rate the pleasantness of eight different foods. Each person was then given one of these foods to eat until they couldn't eat anymore. After eating, they re-rated the pleasantness of all eight foods two minutes and 20 minutes post meal. The study found that at both two minutes and 20 minutes, the pleasantness of the specific food that that person had eaten had dramatically decreased in comparison to the food they hadn't. And I've noticed the same phenomenon myself. Whilst in Thailand, I ate a lot of Pad Thai. It's this really tasty local Thai noodle for those that haven't had it before. And I'd always be so excited for that first bite. And then the next, and then the next. But very soon I started to get used to the taste and be less excited for it. And then before I know it, I've put down my chopsticks and I can't eat anymore. This is exactly what Barbara was referring to in her paper, but it still doesn't quite explain why if you then brought out a dessert, I'd be first to pick up my fork and dig in. Well, this is because of how reward-based eating works. I mentioned earlier that when you take that first bite of your food, dopamine is released in the brain, which makes you feel good and want to carry on eating. But over time with each bite, the amount of dopamine released by the brain decreases so that every bite slowly becomes less and less enjoyable until eventually you don't want any more and you're full up. But when you have dessert, the new sweeter taste and different textures of it reactivates the dopamine reward pathway and stimulates a fresh release of dopamine, which then makes you feel like you have room for it, even if you felt full moments ago. In another study, 48 adults were given two different types of four course meals. One had the same type of food in every course and the other had a different type of food at each course. Interesting, the study found that people ate 60% more calories when they had the four courses with different foods compared to the four courses with just one food. The study concluded that the variety of food kept the meal enjoyable for longer, which made people eat more. It's often why you eat more french fries with condiments compared to without, and why you almost always overeat at a buffet. This has huge implications for our health and managing our eating habits. From an evolutionary point of view, it's thought that our desire for variety is to make sure that our diet is balanced, ultimately so we can get all the essential nutrients we need. But we now live in a time where there's an abundance of ultra processed and calorie dense food. And this variety is stimulating overconsumption of the wrong food, contributing to our modern day obesity epidemic. But it's not all bad. There are ways where we can use sensory specific satiety to our advantage. The first is by eating a variety of the healthy food. It sounds cliche, but eat the rainbow. 
Another study conducted by Barbara Rolls found that children ate more fruit and veg when they were given a variety of different options on their plate in comparison to just one type. So this means try to increase the variety of your healthy food and decrease the variety in your unhealthy food. Another study looked at the eating habits of obese and non-obese women and found that eating the same meal every day led to a decrease in energy intake. So if you're trying to lose weight, you could consider meal prepping at the start of your week by making the same balanced meal and eating it during the week, which reduces your variety, which could help you stick to your calorie goals. And lastly, I started off this video by diving into why you always have room for dessert. So it probably means you have a sweet tooth and that's okay. It's not just you, but actually the way our brains are wired. So embrace it, but make sure it's in moderation. It's okay to have something sweet after a meal, but take a smaller serving. The first few bites of a new taste are really what light up the reward centers in the brain. So a few bites of dessert eaten slowly and savored may be all you need to feel satisfied. So next time you eat in a big meal and the dessert menu comes out and you think to yourself, why do I still have room for dessert? At least you now know. Thanks for getting to the end of the video and please make sure you subscribe to the channel. As always, references and additional reading will be in the video description below. You can check out a previous video I made on the effect blue light has on your sleep and why you can't sleep properly. Until next time and see you soon. <laughs> like fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see my chocolate so. Esha, I want to eat now. Stop it. Esha, stop. <laughs>